To be on the lookout for a man who robbed a store. We do have his description. Can we take that? Let's take his description. I'm not in the right place. You ready to get started now? Okay. Sorry. Welcome to Foundational Bible Teachings. Okay, now that I'm in the right position, we can get started. So I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight's Bible study. Before we get started, let's pray. Maruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, noten veshomer gvarech, lelamed liadrichut lienhot otanu, bederek sheba alenu lelechet alei deit pehat aneinu uzeninu vilevno, leman timsor lanu mirachmatech, yediatra udvunatech, veniref niflaot mitoratra. שרוע הקודש שלח את תנחת כולנו אל כל האמת, ברכת לימוד המילש אליך בשם ישוע. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the Universe, giver and preserver of your word. Teach, instruct, and guide us in the way we should go by opening our eyes, our ears, and our hearts, that you may impart to us of your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding, that we may behold wondrous things out of your law. May your Holy Spirit guide us into all truth and bless the study of your word in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. So we saw the fear of the Lord to mean being scared or frightened of the Lord. We saw that last week. We saw the fear of the Lord to mean having a reverential awe or a deep respect for the Lord God. We saw the fear of the Lord to mean worship, worshiping God in its different forms. So I'd like to look at another facet of fearing the Lord and what it means. And this involves you reaping the benefits in fearing the Lord. So before I get started, I'd like to tell you a story. Back in 1988, I had made applications all over the place. I had wife, at this point I had kids. Nothing was working. I had made an application at a bank. And by the time these guys answered, I go, forget it, I'm gonna die of starvation. So long story short, I ended up applying to this one place. They needed guys badly. So the guy hired me right away. I stayed at this place for about a month, month and a half. And the bank calls me and says, listen, we saw your exams and you have basically had a very, very high score and we would like to have you on our team. I says, sure, not a problem. So when can you start? I says, listen, I'm already working somewhere. Can you give me a couple of weeks notice? and then I'll be able to start, not a problem. So I was supposed to start two weeks after that telephone call. So that night I get into work. So I go see my boss and I wanted to do things that were right. So I went in and I says, listen, I go, uh, just to let you know that in two weeks I'm going to be leaving. I wanted to give you two weeks notice so you have time to find somebody to work. The guy got so angry at me that he fired me that night. I needed those two weeks to pay my rent. I was freaking out. I started praying like there was no tomorrow. I'm at church. Some people must have found out that I got fired. They knew that I didn't have much money. I had a wife, four kids, whatever. And uh, got home one night, and in my Bible, inside a, an envelope, there was money. I count the money. It was the exact money I would have made if I would have worked at that place for two weeks. So God answered my prayer, and I had money to pay for my rent that month. And this is going to be part of the message I'm going to be talking about tonight. So what are the benefits in fearing the Lord. What blessings are involved in fearing the Lord? I want you to turn to Psalm 34, 9. O fear the Lord, ye as saints. In brackets, in parentheses, a saint is somebody who is alive and not dead, by the way. For there is no want to them that fear him. Now, what's the definition of the word want? To be in want means to be in need. It's a state of not having, to be destitute, or to be deficient in wanting something. It's not to have anything. Example, to want knowledge, you're missing knowledge. To want judgment, to want learning, that means you're missing learning. To want food or clothing, or to want money. That means you're in need of these items if you want. So the meaning, believers are encouraged to fear the Lord as it ensures to those who do so will not lack anything that they're going to be needing. Now, I can testify to this. The amount of prayers that I've prayed over my life, incredible. And I am the proof that these words are actually true. Go you have a question? I'm proof too. There you go. So having had a wife who was a stay-at-home mom with four children, my education wasn't high enough for me to procure myself higher paying jobs. So I was at minimum wage and I always had at least minimum two jobs, two, three jobs and whatever I can find, basically to keep my family afloat. So whatever was missing for me financially through prayer, the Lord supplied all my needs. Now there were many times I would be missing money for food, for rent, for clothing, for whatever. So my saving grace was my fear of the Lord, my God. My saving grace was my access to God's throne, that I can come to His feet and lay my supplication at His feet. So for all my financial health and whatever else requested needs that I had, I would go to the Lord. This life I've led ended up being a massive blessing in the end. I didn't see it when I was going through it. Believe me, it was hard. When you don't have two nickels to rub together, it gets pretty tough. But I realize today that whatever I went through, it 
sharpened me as a man, as a servant of the Lord, and it drew me closer to the Lord because I had nowhere else to go. I wasn't going to go knocking on doors. Hey, can you please give me a handout? If I was going to knock on a door, it was going to be on heaven's door. I says, listen, I need a handout. You said that you were going to supply. And you know how many times it supplied? Hundreds and thousands of times. So this blessing was seeing my God working in my life. So if you're going through a rough time, whatever it is that you're going through, a rough life, out of my experience, trust in the Lord and heavily lean on Him. This is what I did. My children are all grown. I've got adult children. They are amazing. My wife did an amazing job with my children. And with whatever financial strength that I had, which wasn't much, the Lord made sure that my kids always had food in their stomach, a roof over their heads, and clothing on their backs. That your life may be depressing, that it's hard, that it's stressful, whatever it is, or it's worrisome. Trust in the promises that God's giving you. There's over 7,000 promises in the Bible. I didn't count them personally, but I've heard it from many different sources. Now, God gave you these promises. Once you know what the promise is, you hold hard onto them, like I did. And in your mind and in your heart, and you don't let go until the Lord actually proves it. George Mueller's coming to mind. I've already mentioned this, I think it was last week or the week before. If you have an opportunity, get that book and I want you to read it. It changed my prayer life. It was something incredible. And because of that, I knew I can come to the Lord with anything, with any problem, in no matter what area of my life. Now for myself, having not had the choice, but being in the situation I was in, I had no choice but to trust in the Lord my God and His promises. You could say, yeah, but you know, you could have went to school, you could have done this, you could have done that. Well, I'm not going to get into that. There were other things that were going on in my life that that's the situation where I ended up in. And the Lord, even through that, He ended up honoring His Word to me. And even today, He honors His Word. So I had nothing else to rely or fall on. So the more I prayed, the more I relied on the Lord, the less stress and anxiety that I had because the Lord would supply. So whatever anxiety that I had, I would rely on one of God's promises, whatever situation I was going through. Now this next promise I'm going to be giving you is found in 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. The word care means, I want you to cast all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all of whatever reasons you can't sleep. I want you to come to me, the Lord says, and I want you to put that on my shoulders. It's like the Lord driving a pickup. He's driving down the street and He sees you with this big heavy pack sack. He stops the, uh, the pickup and He says, you know what, get on. You get on, and as He starts driving on, He looks in the rear view, and you still have the burden of whatever anxieties you're going through, and you're holding on to all of these worries, and He stops and He says, what are you doing? I told you to get in the pickup. I am in a pickup. No, no. What you're carrying, I want you to put it in the pickup. I want you to let me carry it for you. Sit down and don't worry. That's what this verse means. Casting all, whatever situation you're in, all your cares upon Him, for He cared for you. If you're here at this stage right now in your life, that's fantastic news because God is there to help you if you are willing to let Him help you. This life that I've led of want has drawn me closer again to my God, strengthened and tightened my relationship with Him, knowing He was and still is there to comfort and guide me through. My fear, quote unquote, of God, my uttermost respect that I have for the Lord tightened my relationship with Him. The thousands of prayers that I've prayed to my God, for my family, for the thousands of answers that I've received to these prayers, it strengthened me in my walk and my trust in the Lord. In fearing the Lord, that is having respect and reverential awe of the Creator of heaven and earth, there is no want to them that fear Him. Again, want is a state of not having. You don't have, you come to the Lord, and He will supply when you come asking, requesting it from Him. God will grant you your desires. I want you to turn to Proverbs 10, 24. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. I want you to turn to Psalm 37, verses 3 and 4. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. To delight means to take or get great pleasure or joy in something. In this context, it emphasizes specifically finding joy or taking great pleasure in the Lord. The Lord becomes your source of delight or joy in your life. This is where your relationship and your connection with God deepens and becomes more intimate between you and Him. 
An example would be when you find delight or great pleasure being with someone, a spouse, your child, children, a close friend, someone. The overall message is that when a person finds joy and satisfaction in their relationship with the Lord, the latter part of this verse just naturally follows. I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 14 now in verse 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and His children shall have a place of refuge. Having a deep reverence and respect for the Lord brings about a sense of strong confidence. Those who fear the Lord acknowledge His authority and living according to His principles. And they can find security and assurance. My confidence is rooted in the Lord. I am built, I am standing on Him. Furthermore, the statement indicates that the children of those who fear the Lord shall have a place of refuge. This implies that the influence of a parent's faith and reverence for God creates a protective and secure environment for their children. It suggests that a family grounded in the fear of the Lord is likely to experience a sense of confidence and find refuge in God's care and guidance. So the fear of the Lord brings strong confidence and serves as a source of protection and refuge for His children. Again, I can attest to this. I want you to turn to Proverbs 19 and verse 23. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. Again, the fear of the Lord is linked to a fulfilling and protected life and the assurance of protection of any type of evil. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 4. By humility and fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Humility is a quality of being humble, modest, and not overly self-centered. Humility involves recognizing one's limitations. You recognize your strengths and your weaknesses without boasting or seeking attention. You're not being overly proud or arrogant. A humble person is often characterized by a genuine and down-to-earth attitude. Embracing a profound fear of the Lord in every aspect of your life leads to wealth, honor, and a fulfilling existence. This fear encompasses fearing the Lord, having a reverential awe, deep respect, and acknowledgement of God's greatness and holiness and authority. It entails recognizing God's supreme power and willingly submitting to His guidance and to His will. So the verse suggests that when people embrace the humility and maintain a reverent fear of the Lord, several positive outcomes actually comes from it. The first refers to spiritual wealth, blessings, and richness of character. By spiritual wealth, I mean the abundance of qualities and experiences that contribute to a person's inner well-being. God's working from the inside. Once the inside is worked out, this is going to flow naturally to the outside. Things like love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, basically the fruits of the Spirit and you cannot put a price tag on it. So this is basically a spiritual wealth that a lot of people don't have. And even in the church, a lot of people don't have this. So to you who has no peace, what price tag would you put to acquire it? Peace which passes all understanding, reigning in your heart and in your mind. To you who has no love, what price would you put on love for you to be loved? And yet, this is something that you have from inside yourself. As the Spirit seals Himself inside you, all of a sudden, these things are going to start coming forth. And this is a wealth that a lot of people don't have. To you who has no joy, what price would you give to have a joy which passes all understanding? People put their joy in something that they're going to acquire, something that they're going to buy, but this joy is very short-lived. But when you have the joy of the Lord, this thing is going to be eternal. So when you have these inner qualities, when you live this, only then can you bring forth these qualities because they're already inside. They're naturally going to come out. So these qualities are going to come from your beings and also falling on other people. They say happiness comes from within. And that's where it's supposed to come from, not from without to come within for you to be happy. Other spiritual wealth that you get is godly wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It's a treasure that many lack and they're destitute, they're in want of. Only the Lord can supply this because only He can actually dish this out. So this spiritual abundance, fulfillment, and blessings come from living a life aligned with humility and, of course, fearing the Lord. The material wealth that comes by God Blessing the works of your hands. This is the material wealth that you're going to get. God blesses the work of your hands. And if your hands are idle, so is your bank account going to be idle. There's not going to be anything in there. 
What else? Honor. Honor involves respect, dignity, maintaining a positive reputation, your character, your integrity, and actions play a significant role in shaping a favorable reputation. And reputation is everything for someone. Embracing humility and a deep reverence for God generally results in a life that is respected and it's also esteemed by other people. All of this from fearing the Lord? Absolutely. Once you truly know what it means to fear the Lord, these things are just going to come naturally without you even having to think about it and people are going to start looking at you differently. Again, I can attest to that. Individuals who navigate life with humility and a profound fear of God are frequently honored, experiencing respect and high regard from those that are around them. Their character, their integrity and actions contribute to fostering a positive and esteemed reputation. What about life? This includes not only the eternal life that God gives you as a gift, but it's also a sense of a fulfilled and meaningful physical life, guided by moral principles and a relationship between you and your God. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 14. Happy is the man that feareth always, applying God's direction to their lives, but he that hardeneth his heart to God's word by not obeying it, shall fall into mischief. Now question, how does a man fear always. Go to Luke chapter 11 verse 28. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. It's one thing to hear, it's another thing to keep it. It's one thing to look at it, it's another thing to do. It's when you do, that's when you're blessed in your deed. It's in the actual application of it. I hear, I take it in, and I apply it. This is where your life is going to get better. Let's look at another verse, Psalm 145 and verse 19. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry, and he will save them. Again, I can attest to this. God responds to the prayers of those that fear him and fulfills their desires, listening to their cries and offering salvation in whatever form it might come in, in whatever area in your life that it might be in. Let's look at another verse, Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. The fear of the Lord is a treasure that provides, again, stability, wisdom and strength for salvation in challenging times. Salvation doesn't mean only the salvation of your soul. It can be the salvation of you paying your rent, putting food on a table. It's salvation in something. Let's look at another verse. Proverbs 10, 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. As the verse says, the fear of the Lord will prolong your days. I don't need to add anything else to this. So another blessing of fearing the Lord is your first footstep towards wisdom and understanding. And this wisdom and understanding is not of the world. So what do I mean? I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy is understanding. This is not wisdom of the world. This verse emphasizes that true wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord, which leads to an understanding of holiness and, of course, divine knowledge. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the starting point for acquiring knowledge and wisdom and contrasting those who disregard it as it being foolish. What about Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 6? By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. The fear of the Lord leads people to turn away from their evil ways and pursue righteousness, as it's associated with mercy and truth. Men and women who are in prison find the fear of the Lord, and these people in these prisons, as the verse says, they depart from evil in whatever form it could come in, in whatever form that actually got them in prison. Too bad they didn't learn the fear of the Lord before they got to prison. The fear of the Lord is a phrase found in the Bible and its meaning encompasses several interrelated concepts which we've already seen. We've seen the reverence and the awe that we have for God. One aspect of the fear of the Lord is a deep sense of reverence and awe towards God. It involves recognizing His greatness, holiness, and of course His majesty. What about respectful submission to God? It implies a respectful submission to God's authority and a willingness to align one's life with His teachings and His commandments. Again, the commandments that God gives you, it's not because God wants to see you squirm at all, at all, at all. As a parent gives a child commandments because he loves you, he's giving you these commandments so he can basically guide you. I like this one. 
Dread and displeasing God. This is part of the fear of the Lord. While it involves love and trust in God, it also includes a healthy sense of fear, dread, or terror of the Lord regarding the consequences of displeasing Him. When people say, I'm scared of God, it's because you're doing something crooked and you don't want Him to catch you. So this fear is not paralyzing, but motivating towards righteous living and developing a solid, strong relationship with God. So this fear of God, of being scared of God, why is it good? Because it's going to keep you away from the evil woman, from the evil man. It's going to keep you away from situations that you know that you shouldn't be doing. You shouldn't be there. You shouldn't even be thinking it. Why get in there for the pleasure of five seconds? For what? And then it gets you in trouble. God gave you a brain. He expects you to use it. So here's a couple of examples. I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way. And a forward mouth do I hate. I already covered this a couple of Bible studies ago. You fear the Lord. Stay away from these things. You have these character traits. Make sure that you eradicate them from you. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 17 now. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long means consistently maintaining a mindset of reverence and awe towards God throughout your entire day. This is what's going to keep you clean. It suggests a continuous awareness of God's presence, a commitment to live in accordance to His principles and mindfulness of His authority. When you do this, you can't go wrong. If you're playing in God's backyard, you are in the safest place in the world. When you're playing in Satan's backyard, my friend, it's open season and he's coming out for you. And he doesn't care how he gets you because he can't stand you. He hates mankind. He'll do anything to deceive, to come to you and lie to you, make you believe something that's not true. And then what? You're going to be splitting hell wide open when God Almighty says, I have a gift for you and says, I don't want the gift. I want to play in Satan's backyard. Va, Vilya, va. Go and have fun. What do you want me to tell you? You go to hell, you chose to go there. And remember, God never throws anybody in hell. If you go to hell, it's because you decided and you chose to go there. This phrase encourages a lifestyle where one's thoughts, actions, and decisions are influenced by a deep respect for God, guiding behavior and choices from morning to night. It implies an ongoing, unwavering commitment to align one's life with the principles of righteousness and godliness. I want you to turn to Psalm 37. We'll start reading in verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Let's continue in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, he's talking to the believers, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. A truly born again, spiritually circumcised believer, spiritually baptized in the body of Christ, sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, will strive to walk in this world in a way that is pleasing to God. A truly born again, eternally secure believer, as much as lies in him, would never abuse the freedom that we have in Christ to sin against God that redeemed us. So when we have freedom in Christ, we cannot lose our salvation. Yeah, so it means I can go out there and sin all that I want. Sure you can. If you're doing that, you're not saved. Because a truly born again person, believer, he's going to be worshiping God. He doesn't want to go down that path anymore. Paul says, the things I don't want to do, I do. The things I do want to do, I don't do. Yet it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in my flesh. What was Paul saying? We are going to fall. We are going to have our thoughts. We might do something that we're not supposed to be doing, but then the Spirit of God is just going to grip your heart. He says, you know what, Lord, please forgive me. We're going to go out there and we're going to right the wrong that we actually did. But somebody says he's saved and he habitually sins. That it's adultery, fornication, drugs, whatever it is, whatever it is that the guy or the person is into, person is not saved because they're actually loving it. So the person is living in the flesh, there's a very fat chance that that person is actually saved. The last thing I'd like to look at is understanding God's judgment. The fear of the Lord acknowledges the reality 
of God's judgment. It will come upon you. That you believe in God or not, it will come upon you. But you negating God that He does not exist will not erase your judgment. It involves conscientious awareness that our actions have consequences. All our actions have consequences. And that God is just and rewards us according to our ways. In summary, the fear of the Lord is a comprehensive term that encompasses reverence, submission, a sense of awe, and deep understanding of God's character and judgment. It's not about being terrified for God. You got to be terrified for something that you're going to be doing wrong and you know that you are going to get your punishment, your judgment coming to you. And it's also having a profound respect and love for Him that He influences how we should live our lives. I'm going to stop it over here for now. For those of you that don't know how to get saved, I just want you to watch this video here. And for the rest of you, May the Lord guide you and keep you, and Lord willing, we'll see each other here next week.